Welcome back to another Top 10's Day Wednesday video. In today's video, we're going to talk about the 10 most played EDH Planeswalkers from War of the Spark. <laughs> War of the Spark was a Planeswalker-focused set and introduced 37 new Planeswalker cards to the Magic the Gathering database. There was a Planeswalker in every pack, and this set also marked the debut of static Planeswalker abilities in addition to Planeswalkers of different rarities. Prior to War of the Spark, every Planeswalker was a Mythic Rare. Not so in this set, as only 4 of the Planeswalkers were Mythic, 13 were Rare, and 20 were Uncommon. Each of these Planeswalkers have a static ability, and even the buy -a box promo was a Planeswalker, Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge. War of the Spark has had a massive impact on the EDH format, as seven Planeswalkers from this set are seven of the most played overall Planeswalkers in the Commander format over the last two years, as per EDHREC.com. In this video, we're going to list the top 10 Planeswalkers from War of the Spark that see play in the Commander format. Let's begin. Number 10 on this list is Rael, Storm Conduit. Overall, he is the 15th most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years. Rael's static ability allows its controller to deal one point of damage to target player or Planeswalker whenever they cast an instant or sorcery spell. Personally, I would have preferred that Rael dealt one point of damage to each opponent upon cost casting an instant or sorcery spell, but that upgrade may have upped his rarity or overpowered him. He enters with four loyalty counters, and his controller can add two loyalty counters in order to scry one. Removing two loyalty counters from Rael will result in a double cast, allowing his controller to copy the next instant or sorcery spell they cast this turn. Largely played in card drawing and spell slinger themed decks, Rail provides players with typical is it synergies of card draw manipulation and spell copying. Number 9 on this list is Teferi, Time Raveler. Overall, he is the 12th most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years. Teferi's static ability is a control player's dream, prohibiting each opponent to cast spells only any time they can cast a sorcery. Let that resonate for a moment. That is Teferi's static ability. He doesn't need to remove loyalty counters in order to provide this effect. He enters the battlefield with four loyalty counters. Teferi's controller can add one loyalty counter, which will allow that player to cast sorcery spells as though they have flash until their next turn. Teferi can bounce an artifact, creature, or enchantment from the battlefield by removing three loyalty counters. He offers Azorius players more options with respect to blink, control, and stacks-themed deck archetypes. Teferi's power level can be oppressive, and this eventually led to his banning in Standard. Number 8 on this list is Sahili, Sublime Artificer. Overall, she is the 11th most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years. Sahili is the first uncommon Planeswalker to make this list. Her static ability rewards her controller by creating a 1-1 colorless servo artifact creature token whenever that player casts a non-creature spell. This is an enhancement over the typical whenever that player casts an instant or sorcery spell mantra of many is it spell interactions. She enters the battlefield with a healthy 5 loyalty counters for an investment of 3 mana. Her reasonable casting allows players to cast Sahili and other non-creature spells during the same turn, which will trigger Sahili's static ability and create some servo creature tokens to protect her. Sahili's minus two ability allows her controller to choose an artifact they control to become a copy of another artifact or creature they control until the end of turn. Popular in prowess and artifact-themed builds, Sihili's servo production and copy ability creates a high level of versatility. Number 7 on this list is Vivian, Champion of the Wilds. Overall, she is the ninth most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years. Vivian is the first non-blue Planeswalker to make this list. Her static ability allows her controller to cast creature spells as though they had flash, allowing the Stompy Mage to play a land, attack, 
and then pass the turn. She enters the battlefield with four loyalty counters for just three total mana. Add a loyalty counter to Vivian and give up to one target creature vigilance and reach until their next turn. She can dig through the top of her controller's library by removing two loyalty counters. If activated, the player can look at the top three cards of their library, exile one of them face down, and put the other two on the bottom of their library in any order. For as long as this card remains exiled, that player can cast it if it's a creature spell. She has played predominantly in Kadena Slinking Sorcerer Morph decks. This interaction creates a self-sustaining value engine, enabling a player to flash in a creature spell for its morph cost for free every turn while drawing a card each time. Number six on this list is Nissa, who shakes the world. Overall, she is the eighth most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years. Nissa is the second consecutive mono green Planeswalker to make this list, and unfortunately, our last. Her static ability provides an additional green mana whenever her controller taps a forest. She has a converted mana cost of 5 and enters the battlefield with 5 loyalty counters. Her controller can add 1 loyalty counter to Nyssa and then may put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on up to 1 non-creature land that player controls. It becomes untapped and also becomes a 0-0 elemental creature with vigilance and haste. It's still a land, and this effect does not end at the end of the turn. By removing eight loyalty counters, Nissa's controller gets an emblem that reads, lands that player controls have indestructible. Then that player searches their library for any number of forest cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Played in a plethora of mono green, stompy, and big mana decks, Nissa's ramp abilities make her a powerful presence at the magic table. Number five on this list is Liliana, Dreadhorde General. Overall, she is the fifth most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years. Liliana is the first and only mono-black Planeswalker to make this list, and the only Mythic Rare. Lily's static ability allows her controller to draw a card whenever a creature that player controls dies. This is a powerful exchange and very typical of black. Be aware, however, as this is not a May ability, so whenever a creature, any creature, controlled by that player dies, they must draw a card. Drawing out hurts. It hurts a lot. Liliana enters the battlefield with six loyalty counters for six mana. She can protect herself by creating a 2-2 black zombie creature token, an ability that adds one loyalty counter to Lily. By removing four loyalty counters, she forces each player to sacrifice two creatures, possibly allowing her controller to draw two cards. Lastly, Liliana's ultimate ability will cost nine loyalty counters, but it is pretty much game-ending, as each opponent chooses one permanent they control of each permanent type and then sacrifices the rest. This is an enhanced cataclysm that only affects opponents' board states, leaving the battlefield of Liliana's controller completely untouched. Liliana's token production and static death trigger are featured heavily in the Scarab God and Tesa Karloff builds. Number four on this list is Ashiok Dream Render. Overall, Ashiok is also the fourth most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years. Ashiok's static ability is powerful, as spells and abilities opponents control can't cause their controller to search their library. Let's assess this ability with numbers. The top five most played sorceries in the EDH format as per EDHREC.com over the last two years are Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, Rampant Growth, Fireseek, and Demonic Tutor. All of these spells are shut down by Ashiok. Fetchlands, including Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, and Prismatic Vista are shut down by Ashiok. With five loyalty counters to start and a converted mana cost of three, Ashiok nets an amazing return for the investment. Additionally, by removing a loyalty counter, Ashiok forces target player to mill the top four cards of their library, and then each opponent's graveyard is exiled. Most popular in Muldrotha the Gravetide decks, Ashiok's ability to shut down opponents' library searching and exiling opponents' graveyards while filling yours justifies this ranking. Honestly, it's surprising Ashiok isn't higher. 
Number three on this list is Eugen the Ineffable. Overall, Eugen is also the third most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years. Eugen's static ability rewards its controller by reducing the casting cost of colorless spells by two. Eugen enters the battlefield with four loyalty counters for six mana, which, in comparison to other Planeswalkers on this list, is not as favorable ratio of mana investment to loyalty counter return. Eugen's controller can add a loyalty counter and exile the top card of their library face down, look at it, and then create a 2-2 colorless spirit creature token. When this token creature leaves the battlefield, the player returns the exile card to their hand. Additionally, three loyalty counters can be taken off of Eugen in order to destroy target permanent that's one or more colors. Played predominantly in colorless and artifact-focused deck archetypes, Eugen the Ineffable actually is played in more decks than Eugen the Spirit Dragon over the same time period. Number two on this list is Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. Overall, Jace is also the second most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years. Unlike previous cards on this list, Jace's static ability is an automatic win condition if met. If Jace's controller would draw a card from their library while their library has no cards in it, they win the game. Jace enters the battlefield with four loyalty counters for an investment of four mana. Jace's controller can add a loyalty counter to him by forcing target player to put the top two cards of their library into the graveyard, and then Jace's controller draws a card. His ultimate ability costs eight counters and has Jace's controller draw seven cards, then if their library has no cards in it, that player wins the game. Most prevalent in card draw themed decks, Jace often is paired with Laboratory Maniac, which is another creature that sports the ability to win the game if its controller draws a card from their library without any cards left in it. This match is so popular that in the over 23,000 decks listed by EDHREC.com with Jace Wielder of Mysteries, only 15 of them do not include Laboratory Maniac. And lastly, number one on this list is Narset Parter of Veils. Overall, Narset is also the most played Planeswalker in the EDH format over the last two years, towering over number two on this list by over 7,000 decks. Narset's static ability is oppressive, as it denies opponents the ability to draw more than one card each turn. That's not just during their turns, either. At most, casting Windfall will leave each of her opponents with just one card in their hand. Players can get creative in abusing this ability, creating an airtight lock on the entire game simply due to the presence of this mono-blue planeswalker. She enters the battlefield with five loyalty counters for an investment of three mana. Her only loyalty ability allows her controller to look at the top four cards of their library, reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them, and put it into their hand. Played most heavily in decks ranging from Urza, Lord High Artificer, and Tassiger the Golden Fang, to Elsha of the Infinite and the Locust God, Narset is the most played Planeswalker in EDH over the last two years, and her oppressive grip on the controlling of the table is most likely the justification for her top billing on this list. It is interesting to note that the top five most played Planeswalkers in the EDH format, as per EDHREC.com over the last two years, are all from War of the Spark. That'll do it for this top 10 list. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons on the way out. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.